Expandable storage has come to Replit, meaning that your REPLs are no longer limited at one gigabyte, but rather only by the size of your plan. We're going to take a look at using embed chain and expandable storage to create an archive of PDF knowledge that can be queried with an AI. And we're going to look at doing it as cheaply as possible. OK, so to get started, all you need to do is create a new REPL. The new functionality is baked into your plan, which you can find on the My Cycles page. If you go to your account page, you'll be able to scroll down and see the storage you have. Storage is currently 10 gigabytes for our free plan, 20 gigabytes for our hacker plan, and an enormous 50 gigabytes for our pro plan. Of course, we also offer a la carte storage options where you can buy up to 256 gigabytes for your REPL, which should be enough for more or less any pro project. I'm just gonna create a REPL. I'm gonna pick a Python one, make it private, and give it a sensible name. Now, step one is that we're gonna install embed chain. And normally we'd use the package manager for this. This is a nice, efficient way of doing things. It tidies things up after itself. But since the size of the REPL isn't an issue to us anymore, we're gonna go old school and use pip to get a specific version. I'm gonna bring up REPL resources so we can see in a bit more detail about how much size and how many resources I'm actually using. And you can see that just off the bat, this Rebel is taking up 134 megabytes. So I'm gonna go into my shell and I'm gonna use pip to install a specific version of embed chain. And pip allows us to take the exact version. And this is gonna take a little while. And remember, you can always boost that by increasing the CPU in your REPL, but it's gonna take all the packages and all the dependencies and install them. And you'll see there that the size of this REPL is already growing as it installs the massive amount of dependencies that it needs to run everything that embed chain needs. Old school pip install means that we can have more control about what's been installed in our REPL environment. Embed chain is a fantastic project that allows us to embed PDFs, embed YouTube videos and chat contents all in bots. It also allows us to use OpenAI's bots as well as open source ones. So it's a really, really powerful library and something really, really useful for those of us interested in AI. Now notice the size of our REPL. Using pip install is inefficient compared to our package manager. Our REPL is now two gigabytes in size, but it's simply expanded to use the storage available to us on our account. Now that is magic. If anyone ever hit up against that hard limit before in the past, you'll agree with me. But now we've got this version of embed chain working, we can start using it in our Python file. So the first thing to do is just to check that everything's working fine. And we're gonna say, from embed chain, import app. Now the app is the part of embed chain that simply creates the chatbot and allows the embeddings to be stored. I'm gonna call it chat app equals app. Our secrets manager here, we add a secret. We're gonna call it OpenAI. API key and in the value box you're going to paste in your OpenAI API key. So with that saved we can click run again and everything should be good with the world. There we go so it executed it didn't do anything because we're not quite there yet. Take some time to go and install that version of embed chain and just check everything's working correctly. What we're going to do is a very nice thing in this app. We're going to create a folder full and we're going to fill it with PDFs that we want to query. Now, in my case, I'm going to build a bot that is the ultimate programming tutor. I've downloaded a bunch of free PDFs teaching us how to program in dozens and hundreds of different languages. And what I'm going to do is just stick them all in a folder. So I'm going to create a folder up here and call it docs. I'm going to grab a bunch of them and I'm going to drop them in this folder. In fact, if we bring back our resources, you'll see that the size is shot up again. And in fact, I can fill that folder full of as many books as I want. I've actually got about 120 programming ebook PDFs here that I want to feed in eventually, but we'll limit the size just for this test version. Go find some PDFs that you'd like to embed and put them in the folder. So how do we deal with this then? We're gonna use a file list. So a file list is going to be brought from the OS library. So let's make sure we bring that in. And it's gonna be os.list directory. And then in brackets, I'm just gonna place in there the name of the folder. So that will go and fetch the list of files 
in that folder for us, which will be really, really useful. That means that folder is dynamic now. We can just keep adding to it, let it go through it. We're then going to use a loop. And what we're going to do, first of all, is print out that we're loading the file. And then we're going to add it to our app. And the way we do this is we do the name of the variable, chapact.add. And then in brackets, we need two arguments. The first is the kind of file. So that's going to be PDF underscore file. And the second one is going to be the file name, which is going to be a little bit different because we need to give it the full path. So I'm going to use an F string here. I'm going to go in docs file name. So what that's going to do is it's going to read in the PDF. It's going to chunk it up and embed it using OpenAI embeds. And our chat app is going to understand our PDF. And it's going to do this for every PDF in the folder. Then we need to start a chat. So I'm going to use a while true loop and I'm going to ask it a question. I'm going to, I'm going to allow a user to ask a question and then I'm going to return the answer as chat app dot query question. And with that done, we can print out the answer. So with that done, we can just run the program and you can see that CPU spiking as it's adding each of the PDFs now to its knowledge base. So don't forget that each of these embeds is costing us money because it's going off and using that open AI API key and it's costing us tokens. So that's something we might need to think about because if you look at how many chunks each of the books is costing us, that's a significant amount of tokens. But once it's read them all in, it'll prompt us in a loop to enter the question, which we can do and get it answered. Okay, so let's ask a question. How do I output text in React? Okay, that makes sense, doesn't it? Let's pick a different one. How do I output text in C sharp? Brilliant. So it's ingested that knowledge. So now we've built a really remarkable chatbot. We've built one that will ingest any amount of documents that we dump into a folder and be able to ask specific questions to it that it will be able to answer with the training documentation. Now, there's an issue here. Every time we click run, it's going to pass its way through all of those eBooks and it's going to take its time to chunk them up and create vector embeds for us. That's great, but it's not very cost effective. The moment I click stop here, I now have to reprocess everything in order to get it working. Why don't you go and get your program, scanning the folder, embedding the files and starting up your chatbot. One thing that we might want to do is use a cache. So very simply put, when we instantiate that app, if we come back to it again without reading in a bunch of embeds into it, it will still have the knowledge from before. In fact, that's what this DB folder is full of. Those indexes are all the embeds that it's worked out so far. So it should be able to reload them. But because of the code we've built, because of the fact that it loops and loads those files straight away, it's just going to keep doing that. Let's play a bit clever with Replit DB. So Replit DB is a free, simple key value store that we offer for our REPLs. I can get the list of keys and I can simply say if file name not in keys. Well, if it's not there, I'm going to print out loading. I'm going to load it and I'm going to add that file name to my database. I'm just going to make it a none data site because it doesn't need to have anything in it. If not, what am I going to do? Well, I'm just going to print out that I've already loaded it. So I know that it's there and I don't need to read it in again. This simple addition should allow us to catch. So we'll run it again. There's also a really great extension that's worth taking a look at. REPL DB editor and installing this because what you get from that is this. And we'll be able to see what actually happens when we click run. So as you can see now, what's happening is as it processes and chunks up each of those PDFs, it's making a value in REPL DB to say that it's already done it. Okay, so it's loaded all those files. Let's just check it works. So it works. Let's kill it and run it again and see what happens. So now as it runs, what it's going to do, it's going to see those entries in the database and it's going to skip over all that expensive adding. Does it still work? Spot on. It is caching our results now. Not only is it caching our results, but it's keeping an eye on what we've already accessed in the database, out of the folder, and not repeating itself. 
Your challenge is to go and build your ultimate document parser. You could be a lawyer and fill it full of every law you can find. You could be working in the medical field and fill it full of PDFs for every manual for every machine in the hospital. And you can create your instant AI expert in everything under one domain using this coding setup. Expandable storage is really exciting in Replit because it removes another barrier to building large scale projects. We'll be very excited to see what you can do with it.